Hi, I'm Dr. Liza Sahila, and welcome to Multimedia Tech Tutorials. And today, we're going to build a custom MIDI device using the Makey Makey microcontroller and Max MSP. There are hundreds of awesome MIDI devices on the market, but what if you need a unique look for your live set? Well, you can turn almost anything into an interactive device using the Makey Makey microcontroller. The Makey Makey turns you, the user, into an on and off switch by sending a small amount of electricity through its inputs to an object of your choice. Your object must conduct electricity. Meanwhile, you, the user, are in contact with the ground cable and when you touch the conductive object, you will complete the circuit, thus triggering the Makey Makey to send an ON signal mapped to your selected input to your computer. I will be using the Makey Makey's ASDFG spacebar inputs and LED output in my project. I will be converting a broke but beautiful Dantiba into a MIDI device. Here's what I use to build my MIDI Dantiba. 7 uncoated silver plated beads, 1 per input, a spool of 22 gauge cable, thin copper tape and 2 LEDs, 3 coin size sticky back cushions, 2 plastic spacers, a multi-surface super glue, and soldering iron, solder, and wire cutter. Now, let's build it! Kids, don't attempt this build without adult supervision. I mounted the Makey Makey onto the instrument using two plastic razor covers, which I used as spacers. I super glued the spacers onto my instrument, and then I glued the Makey Makey face down onto the spacers. Then, I stripped both ends of two cables and twisted the exposed copper wires. I soldered the silver beads onto the ends of the cables, and then inserted the other ends into my Makey Makey inputs. Then I super glued the silver beads onto my Dante Bass fretboard. The larger beads, which did not lay flat on the instrument, were glued onto two coin-sized sticky back cushions. Now for the LED. I inserted the long lead, the anode, of my first LED into the Makey Makey's D14 input. Then I inserted the short lead, the cathode, into the neighboring ground input. Then I took two cables, stripped at both ends, and crimped the exposed copper wire onto the anode lead and the cathode lead. Then. I pasted a sticky back cushion onto a space on my fingerboard to mount a second LED. I spread the LED's leads apart and superglued the LED onto the cushion. Then took the other ends of the cables attached to my first LED and crimped them onto the corresponding leads on my fretboard LED. After I finished installing my LEDs, I installed a grounding strip using my thin copper tape along the back of the instrument's fingerboard, which the performer will always be in contact with. I routed the strip to the front of the instrument to allow easy access to the Makey Makey's grounding plate. I stripped one end of a Makey Makey alligator clip, which I attached to the grounding plate, and crimped the exposed copper wire to the copper tape. The hardware is now complete but now we need Max to turn the Makey Makey signals into MIDI messages. To my peer data friends, you can get info on how to program your DIY Makey Makey MIDI device on LWM Music, our sister channel. See the description box below for a direct link to LWM Music's PD tutorial. Max MSP is a graphic object-oriented programming language designed for musicians, audio engineers, and multimedia artists. You can get a free trial or a month-to-month -month subscription of Max on Cycling74.com. Max can read many types of microcontrollers including MIDI, HID, and ASCII microcontrollers. Because the Makey Makey is not a MIDI microcontroller, we have to create all channel voice messages from scratch. I am using the Makey Makey's ASCII inputs, therefore I will use Max's key object to read my Makey Makey. I will start patching by mapping the numerical output from my key object to objects and messages that will create note on and note off messages from scratch. Then I will use the bend out object to create pitch bends in homage to the Dante Bascotto like bends and vibrato. Then I will show you how to connect your patch to your favorite software instruments via virtual MIDI cables so that you can play your favorite sounds with your custom MIDI device. Now let's get patching. Six. If you go into cycling 
74 and download a trial of Max or a subscription of Max. You'll be working with Max 7. The interface looks a little bit different, but all the objects that I will be using are available uh, in Max 7. This is the canvas where you put together your software. While you're editing, make sure that this lock at the bottom of your screen is unlocked when you want to test your patch or run it. You lock your patch and then uh, see if your patch works. Lock now. And the first thing I'm going to do is bring in a key object. This will read my ASCII messages from the Makey Makey. This is my key object. Now I need to bring in a number box and I just drag one over from my palette on the side. Right. I'm going to lock my patch. And when I press uh, the letters that correspond to the making making inputs that I'm using, you'll see numbers appear in this number box. W is 119. Actually, as I do this, I'm going to record with a comment uh, what the numbers are. W equals 1. Another object called key up, which will report when I lift my finger off of uh, the corresponding making making contacts listed here. All right. So this side will be responsible for the note on messages, and this other side, the key up side, will be responsible for the note off message. Okay. Now I'm going to work on my note on messages, and in order to do that, I need an object that will send out a bang uh, whenever my making making inputs are activated. Object. I'm going to say select 119, select 97, select 115, select 100, 100, 102, 103, and spacebar 32. And I'm going to attach bangs to the outputs of my select object. So we don't want to use that. I'm going to lock my patch. W A S D F G space bar. Great, works perfectly. I'm going to copy this module. On off, on off, on off, on off, on off, on off. All right, now let's build our note on messages. We're going to need a make note object. And you see that it has three inputs. The first is for pitch, second for velocity the third is for duration. We're going to give our make note a default velocity of 127, which is the max velocity, and we're going to give it a duration of 100 milliseconds. This is not important, we just need a default value in there. Okay. And here, our make note outputs, the first output for, is for pitch, the second is for velocity. Now, we need to tell the uh, make note which pitches map to each one of these notes. So I'm going to just keep it simple for this demonstration and use these, the first six uh, contacts to play the first six notes of a C major scale starting on middle C, which is MIDI note 60. So we're going to start MIDI note 60, which I'm going to map to W. So every time um, I press the W uh, contact on my uh, MIDI down key button, it will play MIDI note 60. These numbers go by half steps, so D natural will be 62. And I'm going to save my spacebar uh, input for my pitch bend. We're not going to be able to hear anything until we bring in a note about object. Left input for MIDI note number, pitch. Middle input for velocity. Now this one's going to be important when we want to communicate to the software instrument channel number. I'm going to set up channel 1 for now. Alright, and when I lock my patch, I should hear the default general MIDI piano. Yep. Alright, now I want to make note off messages. Right now, as this is set up, my note will automatically, uh, Max will automatically send a note off message after 100 milliseconds. I want my down key to react to my playing a little better. And so I don't want automatic note off messages. I want the key up to dictate my note off messages. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in another object called strip note. And strip note keeps the note off messages from make note from occurring. Okay, I'm going to copy this entire line. Edit, copy, edit, paste. We're going to need all of this to create a note off message. However, um, we're going 
going to make our default. We're going to take away this default duration because we don't need it for the nil off message. And we're going to make the default uh, zero. Default velocity zero. And this should give us control over the duration of the notes that we play because now we're in charge of the note off messages and not make note. On, off, A, on, off, S, on, off, D, on, off. Perfect. All right, so now we have our note on messages on this side and our note off messages on this side. Okay, now we're gonna bring in our bend out object. The first input is for the pitch bend amount and the second is for MIDI channel. So I'm going to hook up the MIDI channel to the right outlet. Now we need a slider so that we can create the pitch bends. And I'm putting in a number box so we could see the slider values. press channel 1. Now I'm manually creating the bends with my mouse now, but I need my Dantibot to produce this with my spacebar input. But the spacebar input is an on and off switch, so I need to imitate a potentiometer with a line object that will draw a ramp between any two numbers I want. I'm going to bring a message from 0 to 32 in 200 milliseconds to create a short pitch bend. But if I re-trigger it a few times, it'll sound like a vibrato. And this will be an homage to Koto-like bends that the Dantiba can produce. And this second message is to ramp down from 32 to 0. Up. Now I'm going to connect the spacebar on to 0 to 32 and the other one spacebar off 32 to 0. And now with the spacebar I'm creating the vibratos and pitch bends. Okay, so now let's set up our virtual MIDI cables. I have a Mac, so what I'm going to do is open my MIDI window and activate my IAC driver. Then I go to Max and bring in the MIDI info object. Give it a message for one to list my MIDI devices and a bang. Then I need a U menu to show my MIDI devices list. And when I click on one, my virtual MIDI cables will be in there. Middle input goes to first input of bend out and note out anything sending out MIDI information to an external synth needs to be connected to the U menu. I'm setting up a second channel so that I can play two instruments from Max. And I'm going to use Max to control instruments inside of Reason Essentials. And here I'm setting up Reason to read my virtual MIDI cables. The setup and reason may be different from your digital audio workstation, but I went to my preferences, to sync options, and selected my virtual MIDI cables. Now, I'm bringing in an instrument into my sequencer view. Two instruments, actually, and what I'm going to do is assign each instrument to receive information from a particular channel. The first channel 1, the second channel 2. Then I go to my advanced MIDI preferences, make sure I'm on port A, and port A is reading my virtual MIDI cable, and I set up my instruments on the right channel. And now Max is controlling instrument number 1. And now Max is controlling instrument number two.
all the behaviors of my Midi Danatiga are programmed inside of Max MSP. Alright? Uh, I'm grounding myself with my thumb in the back along the neck of the instrument, and here are the notes that I can use. Alright. Uh, I can also transpose and change the notes in for the scale I want to play. Now I can also make patch changes. Alright. I do another patch change. And what's happening here? I'm sending I'm sending uh, no on messages to reason via virtual MIDI cables. So this instrument can sound like whatever I want it to sound like. I've also uh, programmed an automated pitch bend so as to take this one on and off switch and make it sound like I have a potentiometer to do a pitch bend with. Now this MIDI Dantiba can do so much more than just control a software synth. It can be used to trigger live AV effects, launch audio samples, and control a DMX light fixture. The video linked in the description box below shows my MIDI Dantiba controlling software synth, a DMX light fixture, and live audio effects. Also, if you enjoyed this video tutorial and would like to see interactive multimedia technology live on stage, then please join Psyche Electroacoustic Opera Company's mailing list at psycheopera.com for updates on performances near you. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for our next multimedia tech tutorial. See you soon.